welcome back to episode 7 of South Coast Supremacy. We are in fact still top of the league, however, things aren't as rosy as it seems. Yes, welcome back to episode 7 of South Coast Supremacy. And like I did say in the intro, we are in fact top of the league. However, things aren't all rosy in the Portsmouth family. As you can see, looking at the screen right in front of me, there is a potential of a takeover of Portsmouth. It was previously reported that the chairman was going to step aside in a previous email I received and that someone else in the board was going to take over. But, so that could be, as it says on here, that could be from within. But who knows what implications that has, has on me, my contract on the club, on the players. And who knows what kind of owner we're going to get in. Are we going to get someone a bit richer or someone a bit tighter? But this is something we do need to keep an eye on and hopefully it won't affect us before the end of the season. Another thing that isn't so rosy in the Portsmouth world is, as I did say, we are in fact top of the league. As you can see, when you were last with us, we went and drew with Barnsley after beating Peterborough. And after that, we did go and lose to Plymouth. It was a game we did deserve to lose. We didn't really. We didn't deserve anything from it. However, we did lose to a, like, a really late penalty. So it's a bit of a gut punch, but nevertheless, um, you can't win them all. We then went on to win a few comfortable games, even if the scoreline doesn't necessarily suggest it. But our recent run of form, leading up to today's episode, has not been great. Obviously, we've only won... Well, we haven't won any of the last three. And we've managed to concede six goals. And in fact, in the last game against Bristol Rovers, we were 2-0 down after about 20 minutes. We brought it back to 3-2 with some fantastic goals and some fantastic football. But then, as usual, the defence let us down at the end again, and that is another game we drew. But looking at the state of affairs that is of the league right now, um, this is the current situation. Obviously, we are still five points. No, nope, we in fact seven points clear of third place, which is the most important bit. But ironically, the teams that were with us and around us and expected to challenge us are not even necessarily there anymore. As you can see, Plymouth have fallen off quite a bit in regards to us anyway. That's definitely been a change around from early in the season where they were in fact close to nine points ahead of us. Now we are nine points ahead of them, even even though they beat us. And obviously Ipswich are massively on the rise. They've come out of nowhere. They're doing really, really well. Um, and so is Oxford. So I'm not saying we're secure top two because far from it, only seven points in it with nine games to go. However. I'm not going to panic too much. Do I feel like we've run out of steam? I don't think we've run out of steam just yet. But as you can see, um, Scarlett is still, do is still doing what he does best, scoring goals and playing well. It is worth noting that we did get a youth intake email very recently. However, looking at the um, list of players and potential players for Portsmouth Future, it's not something I'm going to get too excited about. I mean, there's maybe a keeper here and a couple of, couple of players on this list. Who knows? But at the moment, there's no one here really standing out, so it wasn't really something I felt I needed to mention, really. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the first game of the episode, where we are playing Port Vale at home. And here's the team for today's game. We've got Gilvey on the left, Raggett and Morrison in the middle, and Poole on the right with Griffiths in goal. Um, this is definitely a defence I will not be having next season, because if there's had one issue this season, it's been conceding goals. And even though I have made, I know I've only one addition, but they don't seem to be getting any better. In the midfield, we have McEachern and Pack, with our one of our newish signings, Vidra, in front. Dale on the right, Springer on the left, who is still in fine form himself. Uh, he's another player that I could be looking to bring back next season. And one of our new loan signings, Cullen, up front. So here we are, we're just about to kick off. And hopefully, even though recent form hasn't been great, hopefully we can get a win here and really try and cement our place inside this top two. So we can have a nice end to the season and look forward to playing next season in the championship. There's Dale on the right from McEachern. Nice ball in. Are we going to make some of this? No. We're very active and lively today. McEachern's another one who I haven't really... Back with the ball. Is Paul going to do something of that now? McEachern's another one where I haven't really... I would brought him in on a one-year deal, um, and I can't really see that lasting any longer than this season. We're going to have quite a few early highlights here, all for us. I'd like to make something off the highlights, not just a good bit of passing. Ooh, I mean, that was a good um, good header, just couldn't keep it on target. Hmm. 
Really? <sighs> really? I mean, I have no words. I mean, I, I, I think it's probably one of the first games I've started him um, over Scarlet. That's the one. Um, and I don't know. Well, come on, Bishop. I hope you're doing very well in real life. So try and replicate that in my game, please. I mean, Portville are bottom of the league. Um, so I kind of am expecting a win today. Considering all the highlights and the chances we've had early on, we've done nothing to really trouble Portville. And then, in fact, on oh, got a highlight themselves here. Oof. I mean, you get that tackle run. It's a pan. This is the first chance they've had. This is the first chance they've had in the entire game. And this is the problem with the Portsmouth defence. Is, well, they can't defend. And we are going to. I don't want to say it. Because I said I wasn't worried too much. But we are struggling to get over the line here. I mean, Port Vale are bottom of the league. And we are struggling against Port Vale. Here they are on the counter-attack again. Is it just going to be another shot, another goal? I mean, with our defence, you just never know. Oh, my God. I mean, is this team serious? Is this team actually actually serious? They've had two proper chances and scored two goals. But let's face it, regardless of what league I'm in this next season, which is I'm not entirely sure anymore, this defence will not be the ones there. Well, guys, we are, in fact, at halftime, and that was, how can I say, a dreadful first half. But lots of wasteful chances, an like absolute waste of a first half for ourselves. Port Vale have had two decent chances and two goals. And it's safe to say, defensively, we are shocking. Well, the lads aren't happy that I shouted at them. So let's see if they can do a better second half. It is funny there that the um, defence is um, anxious and feeling upset that I shouted at them, despite the fact that I've, they've had two decent shots and two goals. I mean, I'm not entirely sure what they want me to do with that. I mean, we're making a habit of having to pull two goals back in every single game. This is a, well, I say every single game. It's the second game, but it's not a habit you want to be getting in. I mean, these are top. These are bottom of the league, and we're at home. We are so wasteful. We are, it's just... This is just... This entire game has been wasteful. I was hoping I could come on on this episode and, you know, win two games, give ourselves a good seven points clear. Um, laugh, laugh it off and say, right guys, I'll see you at the end of the season for the promotion party. But at this rate, we could be coming back at the end of the season, needing crucial wins just to get promoted. This doesn't bode well for the rest of this team when I don't play Scarlet for one game because he's knackered and we're so wasteful with the bot or without him. Honestly, I think I might have to shift this defence around because um, they want me... Maybe, maybe I just start playing pool in the... Um, in the centre back position straight away, maybe he's part of the problem. Maybe I've bought a dud player. I like to think he isn't. though. I like to think yes, he has the age and the time to um get better. Can you do something about it? Yeah. Is it allowed? No. Yes. It's after the last episode. So I'm hesitant to score. I think it was what two goals, two offside goals first. Come on, Bishop. That's how you respond to Scarlett. Scarlet. At least one of our players are doing something about it. We only need two more to go now. That was a good bit of play. I do some encouraging now. Here we are, another highlight. Can we come back? Fitra's in. No, he's not. We got a corner, but we don't seem to make much of corners. In fact, we didn't even get a highlight from that one. I think it's time to make some changes. I say that, but I don't really want to because... This team's not doing too bad. In fact, you know what? I'm going to make that one change. But I'm going to stick with this. I know it seems a bit ironic because, you know, we've done nothing with it. But if I'd have said we're not doing something with it and then that happened, I'd have just been like, I'd give up. I'd have just absolutely give up. In fact, I am going to make those changes because we are now starting to um, die off. I haven't really got anyone to put anywhere. I think Vidra stays on because he's got a bit of, still got a bit of class about him at any moment. I think he has only scored one goal for us, which is a little bit concerning considering the sort of player he is um, in the league we're in. So I'm not too sure I'm getting full value of him, but his link-up plays really well. Oh, come on! That was so close, that one. That was so close. Are we just about to lose at home to bottom of the league? I think we are. Well, guys, that is full-time. And in fact, we have lost at home to bottom of the league, Port Vale. 
So, as I said at the beginning of the season, when things aren't all rosy in the Portsmouth family, this, this, this is a prime example of what I mean. I don't know what's going on with this team, but in recent form, we have been dreadful. But this is the league table, and luckily, too, not too much damage has been done. Looks like the teams around us um, didn't win either. I mean, Oxford can close us down to four points, but more crucially, Barnsley didn't win either. Oh, apologies, maybe they did, but we're still seven points clear. Um, but we need to we need to see this out. Eight games to go, we cannot miss this out. And just to add to the issues, Cullen is out for four to five weeks. I mean, I brought him in on half a season loan with the potential of buying him. I don't even know if he's going to play again this season. Um, but I can't say I'm devastated and I can't see me looking at bringing him in. Well, as you can see, just quickly, we were asked if we wanted to hold a team meeting. I did. I basically told the lads that I know we've been a bit rubbish lately, but we can obviously turn it around. Um, and they seem to be um, happy about that. Uh, they said um, they took responsibility and said basically, yes, we've been rubbish and we can do it. So hopefully the morale boost will help in with the running. Right, guys, let's not wait any longer for the second game of the episode. We are at home again against 19th place Forest Green. Um, hopefully this time we can make a better outing against the team um, towards the end of the league. Um, obviously, we really could do with a win because we're now, what, four or five games without a win. So this is the team for today's episode. We've got a Gilvy on the left. We've moved Morrison on to left centre-back with Poole. As I said in the last game, I might consider moving into centre-back now. And the way we're defending, I can't think he can do any worse, really. But Rafferty at right back and Griffiths in goal, who is another one who won't be here next season. Doherty and Pack in the middle. Pedro in front of him. Dale on the right, Springer on the left, and we've got Scarlet back up front, which is very much needed, and hopefully we don't waste all those chances like we did in the last game. So here we are at kickoff, and hopefully the first highlight is a nice crusty goal for us. I know I always keep saying at the beginning of every single game that it's just another highlight to kick off the game. But it'd be nice to make the most of one of them. I mean, everybody else does against us, so why can't we, um, we, why can't we have one of them? First proper highlight. Oh, yes. First proper highlight of the game. First corner. And it's Morrison. Which means everyone's going to whinge at me even more. At the fact that I'm not giving him a new deal. Because he's 35 years old. Everybody's whinging at me. The press are whinging at me. The fans are whinging at me. The owners, whatever, whinging at me. Because I still haven't given him a new deal. And he runs out of contract at the end of the season. But he's 35 years old. And I'm moving on to younger players. But still, we scored. And the first goal for a change. Forest Green have got the ball here. Hopefully they're not just going to go and score with their first proper chance of the game. Which is a habit we seem to have. No, we've won the wall back, ball back and we are on the counter-attack. Let's bring it to Pat. Can he make something of it? Is he just going to... Oof. I mean, that was pretty decent. I mean, we're getting a habit of shooting from outside the box and not doing anything with it. Bring it with another corner. We cannot replicate the last corner. A scarlet on the right with a bad touch, which means we've lost the ball and the highlight's gone. But straight away, we are back into another highlight with Pat. Can we make anything of this one? No. No, we can't. We just recovered the ball here. Can we make anything of it? No, we just do a terrible... Oh, we've won it back. Spring that makes some of the most of it. Yes. It was... Is this... Was that, I'm, that's their first goal? Maybe it was first goal in the league. Maybe the other goal was in the cup. We're 2 up at halftime. It is a nice bloody change to be 2 up rather than 2 nil down at halftime. This is a result that was needed. Well, crucially, I've tweaked the defence. I've brought Rafferty in. Is that right? Rafferty in at right back, put Paul in the middle. And we've only had conceded one chance, and we haven't conceded a goal yet, which is important. But here's Scarlett again. Ooh, no, I think that was a good tackle there. Oh, but the brother there on the counter-attack, have I spoke too soon? No, that was some great defending. This is more like it. I mean, it's only half a game. Nothing to get too excited about, and we are playing... Forest Green in 19th place, but still. This is some exciting, it's finally some good football for a change without conceding goals. My opinion about Griffiths has changed um, up and down the entire season. It was dreadful, and I said I'd replace him. Then he recovered, now he's sort of in between there. He obviously will have to do to the end of the season because he's the keeper I've got, but I will not be looking at bringing him next season. It really has not done enough to convince me that I'd want, even want him around next season. But we are, in fact, at half-time. 
And for once, it is a nice half time because we're 2 0 up. Half time, we've had some great chances and we haven't conceded a goal or haven't conceded any chances. Has maybe that tweak in defence done the job? Who knows? But let's not wait any time. Let's get into the second half and let's see if we maybe get a snatch another goal or two, or at the very least, not concede any more. Forest Green, do you like to play out from the back? I have noticed. Um, it's a risk they're willing to take, and we haven't quite punished them for it yet. Um, but it could pay off. Oof. I mean, that was a good acrobatic shot. I mean, Pack's another one. It's such a shame. I mean, I'm glad he's around next season, but to try and replace him is going to be difficult because he does a lot. He works a lot of... Um, he does a lot in that midfield. He creates a lot of chances, opens a lot of space, some cracking passes. But he's heading into his 30s, and maybe immediately he can stick around, maybe be a starter next season. But if we want to make Portsmouth the best team in the South Coast, this is absolutely going to mean getting to the Premier League. Ah, yes. See, Scarlett was, it took him 60 minutes, Scarlett back in the team, he scored a goal, doesn't waste his chance. And to be fair, I'm reaping the rewards of my own failure, because as I mentioned before, I have tried to replace him, I did try and replace him, that player has since come and gone, and Scarlett's continued to score. But I think we can safely, sort of safely say we've won this game, nice solid win. I tweaked a few things um, with the defence and what I was asking of them. And it seems to have maybe done the trick, at least temporarily, but I don't need it to be temporarily. I just need to get to the end of the season. Scarlet again, is he going to... Oof, that would have been a lovely run and a lovely finish. Nice cheeky finish at the end there, but never mind. Here they are, and they can't attack again. Oh, my God. Oh, where goes that clean sheet? Not that I should even be remotely surprised that we can't keep a clean sheet. Um, You have to credit the goal. I mean, you have to question how the goalkeeper, how he's managed to score a header from there and get it over the keeper. But that just emphasises the point of the reasons why I will not be having Griffiths here with us next season. Because he's not the long-term solution to Portsmouth. Hopefully, though, it isn't too much issue and we can see the game out comfortably. It does look like that is going to be the case. We do have a highlight right at the end here. Hopefully, it comes to nothing. Hopefully, we can... Get rid of it. Um, but nice solid save by the keeper. And hopefully that should be the end of the game there. He says while the game's still going on. And they are... Well, I thought they were going to be on the counter-attack, but never mind. And there we have it. 3-1 at full time. We finally won a game first in about five. And it was on... It was live on the camera. A nice solid first half. 2-0 up with one more goal. We looked a bit more solid. We didn't look at too like fragile in defence this time, which is an improvement. But nevertheless, we won 3-1, and I think it gives us the boost that we needed. So there we have it going into the last seven games of the season. This is the state of play in the league so far. Obviously, we're still seven points clear of second. We are, in fact, seven points clear of third as well, and fourth. So that's that's a lot. Of, they're all bunched up there. So only seven points clear of all of them. Um... So he's still open to the fact is we could finish in the top two. We could even struggle to finish in the top four. But I feel, I think we'll be pretty safe. I think we'll be pretty secure. Um, but so those words will probably come and bite me. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, more importantly, we are 12 points clear of, of seventh, which was also always the minimum goal. The goal was always playoffs, and I think that's pretty close to being secured. But that is the state of the league with seven games to go. Right, guys, thank you very much for coming out and watching episode 7 of South Coast Supremacy. We are getting towards the end of the season now, so now that was just to say, give you an update on where we are in the league. Play a few games, see how we do and see how the team's playing. I do appreciate anybody that does come out and watch any of these episodes, this one and the previous six and more to come. And guys, if you really are enjoying this episode, Feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the episode, it really does like it really does help me out, and I really massively appreciate it, especially starting out on this journey. And hopefully, my episodes and things are getting better episode by episode for you guys. Um obviously, guys, if you would like to let me know how you think of the video, what you think of the series so far, what you think of the Portsmouth team, maybe give me a few ideas of what you think I should be doing in the summer. Do you think I should keep Morrison for another season? Feel free to comment down below and let me know your thoughts and feelings on the game. But again, as I said, feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the episode, 
and in terms of coming back for the next episode um we are best part of say three games well well we're three games clear so assuming that we continue and the other teams continue to win theirs i'll probably be looking back around the Accrington or derby game but nevertheless i'll be back for the game that hopefully will see us confirm our promotion to the championship we can all have a big celebration then i can start panicking about what i'm going to do next season considering half my team are all out of contract and i don't really want to sign any of them but again thank you very much for coming out and i hope to see all you guys in episode eight